It has been said that it's in the darkest moments that we find our greatest strengths. Some people believe that Earth is in its darkest hour, the darkest before it goes black. In the constant struggle to keep the world in motion, there are some who believe that we are running out of ways to move into the future. However, others believe that we are standing on the edge of a new industrial revolution. It is always darkest before the dawn. As Eric Drexler, father of nanotechnology, believes, we must open our eyes to new prospects on the atomic scale so that we can progress into the future. And that is a matter of using tools to build better tools. We've gotten this far to the scale of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, we now have in hand tools for beginning to build with atomic precision. And we can see pathways from there to a truly transformative technology. And internationally, it's time to begin to change our conversation about the future, to consider prospects that are very different, prospects that offer a new kind of hope for the future of our civilization. To apply nanoparticles to our everyday lives, we must understand what nanotechnology really is. Nanotechnology is at the heart of a new industrial revolution. Nanoscience and nanotechnology are the study and application of extremely small things. It can be applied across other science fields, including chemistry, biology, physics, and engineering. Nanotechnology involves the manipulation and control of individual atoms and molecules. Materials are being made at the nanoscale to take advantage of enhanced properties including higher strength, lighter weight, increased light spectrum control, and greater chemical reactivity. Nano means one billionth, so one nanometer is one billionth of a meter. Just how small is that? A sheet of paper is 100,000 nanometers thick. A strand of human DNA is 2.5 nanometers in diameter and a human hair is approximately 80,000 to 100,000 nanometers wide. Nanotechnology goes back much further than one might expect. The 4th century shed light on the first pre-modern nanotechnologies. Early examples of nanosaturated materials were based on the empirical understanding of how to manipulate materials. The use of high heat was one common step to produce materials with novel properties. An example of this pre-modern nanotechnology was the Lysurgis cup, which looked opaque when lit from the outside, but translucent red when light shines from the inside. Later, between the 9th and 17th century, glowing luster ceramic glasses used in the Islamic world and later in Europe contained silver, copper, and other metallic nanoparticles. Fast forward to 1985, and one of the first nanoparticles was discovered. Researchers Harold Croto, Sean O'Brien, Robert Curl, and Richard Smalley discovered the buckyball. The molecule resembles a soccer ball in shape and is composed entirely of carbon, much like graphite and diamond. The research team was awarded the 1996 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for discovering more generally the fullerene class of molecules. To have a strong understanding of the behavior of nanoparticles, one must be familiar with the basic principles of quantum mechanics. In our daily lives, we depend on classical physics to describe what happens around us. However, these basic laws cannot be applied on a nanoscale due to the fact that the properties of classical physics cannot describe phenomena that occur on the nanoscale. There are many quantum mechanical phenomena which help to describe the behavior of nanoparticles. For example, the atoms in carbon nanotubes have been discovered to be bonded primarily through sp2 hybridization. This bond nature is what gives these nanotubes their extreme strength. This vital information can now help future researchers to synthesize other nanotubes with similar properties. Quantum confinement is very relevant in various nanostructures. This phenomena is observed when the particle size is too small to be comparable to the electron's wavelength. This concept is particularly useful in semiconducting nanostructures since different amounts of energy are required for the electrons to move across different parts of the structure. In addition, other quantum phenomena such as superposition, entanglement, and quantum tunneling provide further insight on the behavior of nanostructures. Quantum superposition basically states that a single electron can simultaneously exist in two different states. 
entanglement describes the concept that two electrons can form communications with one another. Quantum tunneling explains how various electrons can pass through barriers which they could not normally pass through. These fundamental concepts are vital on the nanoscale since they describe how nanoparticles bond to form larger nanostructures. They all involve close analysis of electron behavior, which is what causes the bonding in nanostructures. There are no other forces involved in bonding of nanoparticles, which makes these quantum mechanical concepts that much more relevant. Without the principles of quantum mechanics, the synthesis of nanoparticles would be nearly impossible. There are many ways nanotechnology can improve everyday life. Three main nanoparticles are quantum dots, buckyballs, and carbon nanotubes. Quantum dots are very small semiconductors which can be tuned to emit different wavelengths of light. Quantum dots can help treat antibiotic resistant infections. Graphene quantum dots can be used in humidity and pressure sensors intended for spaceflight due to their ability to function in extreme environments. And furthermore, quantum dots can be used to produce images of cancerous tumors. Buckyballs were discovered by a trio of researchers working out of Rice University in 1985. Buckyballs are composed of carbon atoms linked to three other carbon atoms by covalent bonds. However, carbon atoms are connected in the same pattern of hexagons as seen on soccer balls, giving the buckyball a spherical appearance. Buckyballs range from containing 20 carbon atoms to 100, but most commonly contain 60 carbon atoms. Buckyballs can be used to trap free radicals during allergic reaction and block inflammation. The combination of buckyballs with other nanotubes can produce different solar cells, and tungsten disulfide buckyballs can be used to make stronger bulletproof vests. As for carbon nanotubes, Roger Bacon originally produced the earliest images of carbon nanotubes in 1959. However, it was not until 1980 that Howard Tennant applied for the patent to produce them. Finally, in 1991, Sumio Ajima, a researcher at NEC's Fundamental Research Lab, was able to not only take photos of nanotubes, but was actually able to explain what they are. Ajima placed a sample of carbon soot containing buckyballs in an electron microscope for purposes of photographing buckyballs. However, in addition to the buckyballs, needle-shaped structures were seen. The needles were in fact cylinders of carbon that were formed at the same time as buckyballs. Much like buckyballs, carbon nanotubes are a lattice of carbon atoms, with each atom covalently bonded to three other carbon atoms. Carbon nanotubes are similar to buckyballs but form into the shape of a cylinder. Certain particles behave differently at the nanoscale than at regular size. This causes them to emit toxic material. Some nanoparticles, such as cerium oxide and silicon dioxide, can produce free radicals which can alter DNA strands and cause damage to various tissues. These dangerous nanoparticles must be disposed of properly to avoid contamination of water and air. The possible future applications of nanoparticles are numerous, and with the advancement of current technologies, nanoparticles have the potential to change multiple industries worldwide. The world of medicine has the potential to be significantly improved with the introduction of nanoparticles. Nanoparticles can be engineered into vaccines, which can enhance their effectiveness at identifying and dismantling viruses before they can kill cells in the body. Various types of electronics can also be heavily influenced by nanotechnology. Nanoparticles can be integrated in electronic devices to improve power consumption and reduce weight. Ultra-thin nanotubes can be integrated into electrical circuits and transistors, which would greatly increase their functioning speed. But what does this all mean for future generations? Eric Drexler once said, In thinking about nanotechnology today, what's most important is understanding where it leads, what nanotechnology will look like after we reach the assembler breakthrough. In the long run, technological advancements like nanotechnology will leave the world better off than if problems had not occurred in the first place. Environmentalists say it is always darkest before it goes black, but with nanotechnology, future generations will enjoy more productive lives. It is always darkest before the dawn.